the materials to that as well. Um, yeah. All right, let's go ahead and get started then. Um, so today we're going to be talking about um, polynomials, um, which is going to be like a pretty big thing in any algebra. Um, wait, let me close my door. But yeah, this is gonna, this is a pretty big thing in like algebra questions on the A and C and E. Um, and like before, we're gonna kind of start with some easier like foundational things, and then we will go up to like some more challenging questions um, in this lecture. So let's go ahead and start. Um, yeah. So let's just talk about some basic polynomial things. Hopefully everyone should be pretty comfortable with these. If not, that's that's also okay. Um, so everyone knows what a polynomial is. It's gonna be a function that is entirely in a single variable. Um, and every term is going to be the sum of, is every term is going to be um, some constant, we'll call it a, a sub i, and times x to the i. And this is, is going to go from 0 to n. Um, the degree, so this is a really complicated way of writing a polynomial, but um, if you can get all the terminology, then it should be pretty simple to wrap your head around. But I, uh, I'll kind of dumb it down a bit here. Um, the degree of a single variable polynomial is the highest exponent. So in a quadratic, if you have f of x is equal to x squared plus 3x plus 6, um, this, the biggest exponent is going to be um, x squared, so the de degree is going to be, we, de we say degree of f is going to be 2, and then for like a g of x, that's like x cubed, only x cubed, it's going to be 3, and yeah. Um, so yeah, the fundamental theorem of algebra, very fancy name, states that an n degree polynomial uh, will have n complex roots, not necessarily distinct. So this thing, even if you put it into the quadratic formula, you're not going to get real roots. You're going to get negative 3 plus or minus 9 minus 24. This is negative 15 over 2. It has no real roots, but it's going to have two complex roots. Um, and that's going to be the same number as the degree. And note that they're not necessarily distinct. So like x minus 1 to the power of 6 is going to have um, six roots, but they're all going to be 1. Um, and yeah, we can get a pretty cool factory from this. Um, what that means is um, if we know all the roots, then we have f of x is equal to x minus root 1, x minus root 2, x minus root n for n roots. So that's another way to write it other than just like, oh, we have to know all the coefficients. And this is going to be pretty important. So make sure you know like both of, both of these ways to write it. Another way is also like the vertex something formula. The It's like the one where you complete the square. That one doesn't show up too much, but so every now and then it'll, it'll appear. Uh, but we won't be talking about it too much today. So. Let me know if something is like kind of like not legible or if you want me to slow down, I'm definitely, I, I can read the chat and everything, so. Um, so now what's, what is a parabola? So, um, you might have seen a parabola in like algebra one. Um, the formal definition of a parabola is a curve that is equidistant from a point in the line or the focus and the directrix. Um, the point on a curve that is closest to both, um, which is like what happens when you draw the fo like a perpendicular line from the focus to the directrix, that's going to be the vertex. That's going to be the midpoint. Um, and yeah, I, I talked about this just now, but you remember the vertex form of the parabola? It's going to be like 
a x minus h squared plus k. And f of x equal to that. Yeah, you might have seen this before. Yeah, Alex, perfect. Um, this is the only one that you really want to graph. Um, generally, fo focuses and directrix don't appear too much, but actually, this year on the AMC twelve, they appeared pretty late. Uh, they appeared in both. Uh, they appeared in the A. So it's definitely worth noting. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, I forgot what I was going to say, but yeah, this, this is just kind of a basic parabola definition. And like for bigger curves, you can graph them, uh, but generally they'll look kind of complicated. They don't have any really nice symmetries, um, but like parabolas, never a bad idea to graph them. And we're going to talk a bit about more about fo focuses and directrices in one of the practice problems, but um, not for now. So now let's go ahead and just talk about Vietas. And um, hope, hopefully if you're like at the annual, we will be pretty familiar with Vietas, but this is just kind of a rundown. Um, so let's take your bog standard quadratic. Um, then we can, like we have AX squared plus BX plus C. Um, then we can use them, uh, let's say that the roots are R1 and R2, then we can use the factored form. So that's gonna be AX minus R1, X minus R2. Um, when we expand this, do we see anything cute, like kind of interesting about the um, coefficients? Uh, not quite, uh, but you're very close, Alex. Yep, perfect. Actually, no, not not quite. Um, I think you have the divide by a on the wrong side. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's that's correct. Okay, so what happens when we expand this is that we get x squared minus r1 plus r2x plus r1, r2. And then all of this times a is gonna be equal to x ax squared plus bx plus c. So ax squared obviously goes away, which means that like the, the term on the x and the constant should be the same. And then when we write that all out, we get that negative b over a is equal to root one plus root two. And root one root times root two is going to be c over a. Um, that's going to be our key formulas. Yep. So in a quadratic, the sum of the roots is going to be negative b over a, and then the product of roots is going to be c over a. Okay, so hopefully you wrote that down. Now let's go ahead and get started with our first practice question. Um,
Just wait for a couple more answer, answers to trickle in. Okay, for everyone who said uh, 39, you're correct. Um, let's just go over like, uh, first of all, if you just try to do this normally, this is a massive pain. Uh, like if you just find, okay, so P, oh, wrong pen, my bad. You just take P is equal to um, seven plus or minus the square root of 49 minus 20 uh, over two, you know, not, not fun. Um, T is just a variable, um, but it, like we can use X instead, but T is just, it, it's just an alternate variable. Don't worry about it. Um, so yeah, instead of that, we can just, you know, use the fact that P and Q are the roots of this. So remember T squared minus seven T plus five, is equal to t minus p, t minus q. Um, yeah, and then we can expand this to be t squared minus p plus q times t plus pq. And then p plus q is equal to seven, pq is equal to five. Notice that this is a monic polynomial, which means that the, uh, the coefficient here is just one. So um, we don't have to worry about divide by a. Sometimes I forget about that. That's you know that don't don't do that. Um, so p plus q is seven, p q is five, and then we want to find p squared plus q squared. So we could just go ahead and square this. P squared plus q squared plus two p q is equal to forty nine, and then subtract ten from both sides to get p squared plus q squared is equal to thirty nine. Very nice. Make sure everyone's just comfortable with how we got to that conclusion. Oh, by the way, if you raise your hand, I can't actually manually call on you. So just type it in the chat and then I will answer it to the best of my abilities. Oops. Okay, in that case, let's just go ahead and move on. Okay, here's another one. Catch Andrew. <laughs> Thanks. Seen a lot of right answers. Hey, 
If you put negative 15 over 16, you're correct. Let's go over this. So um, this, you can just write it as m plus n over mn, which is very, very convenient because um, we can find these really easily. This thing is, this is just negative 15 over 2. This is uh, negative b over a. Remember the negative part. Don't forget the negative. Um, and uh, mn is going to, oh, actually, um, yeah, never mind. No, this is going to be 16 over 2, which is 8, but we'll keep it as 16 over 2 because the 2s cross out. So it's going to be negative 15 over 16. Perfecto. Yeah, pretty easy question. Um, so now let's go ahead and try to generalize this for uh, somewhat larger polynomials. Um, this is where things start to get a little bit more complicated. Um, let's say cubics or quadratics. Um, so for cubics, let's say we have ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. And this is equal to a. Or, oh, I, I forgot to mention. Um, make sure you put the coefficient on outside of these. You don't want it interfering with any of the roots. Um, oh, I, I don't I don't need to put dot, dot, dot. Ha -ha. Um, x minus r3. Okay, what can we write from that? Andrew looks great. Yeah, so uh, if we expand this, we get a times x cubed minus r1 plus r2 plus r3 x squared uh, plus r1, r2 plus r2, r3 plus r1, r3 x minus r1, r2, r3. And then we can just line everything up. So negative b over a is going to be r1 plus r2 plus r3. C over A is equal to R1, R2 plus R2, R3 plus R1, R3. And then negative D over A, keep in mind the signs, by the way, um, that's going to be R1, R2, R3. All multiplied together. So uh, what would cubics be like? Um, not cubics, cortex. So fourth degree. Um, wait, this is third degree. This is fourth degree. And can we say something for N degree?
Yeah, Kyler, yeah, it looks great. Um, so if, you, if you're starting to notice a pattern, uh, negative B over A, always the next term over the, every, first of all, everything's over the first term. Um, so this one's gonna be the sum of all of the roots. This one's gonna be um, them taken in twos. Um, you can assume that the next term is going to be them taken in threes. In this case, there's only one way. And then we can just keep going. But also, you need to make sure to alternate negative signs. So negative, positive, negative. Um, the formula doesn't look very clean, but it, you, it, uh, if you use like enough summation notations, then you can kind of get the point across. But my, I think it's easier to just see it rather than to like write down a formula for it. But you see what I mean? Um, so. You know, you, you go down these coefficients, I'll put them all over A, uh, put a negative when you need to, which is negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, and, uh, uh, go on until you get to the coefficient. And then you're going to take the roots in um, the various like, permutations. And notice that they're not consecutive. So R1, R2, R2, R3, R1, R3. If we include uh, like a, a, four, a fourth root, it would be, you know, we would add an R1, R4, R2, R4, R3, R4. We have six terms, four choose two. Um, oh yeah. Now let's put that to the test. Um, so let's start with a pretty straightforward question. This is an old Amy question. Um, find the sum of the roots, real and complex of this equation, and there are no multiple roots. A little hint, just remember your binomial formula. Oh, shoot. Sorry. Um, let me go back to the slide. Um, sorry. Uh, I'm skipping questions left and right. Uh, uh, hold on a second. Um, I accidentally skipped a ton. Okay, there we are. My sincere apologies. Let's get back to that question. So, um, like I mentioned, this is an old Amy question, which is actually kind of a hint for this because um, this question, uh, I saw a lot of negative answers and I saw some, I saw like one fractional answer. And the thing is, 
for Amy, the answers are only three digit integers. Uh, well, well, three at most three digit integers, positive integers. So a uh, little hint for that. But now let's get to this question. Um, Still, if you put 500, which like a lot of, I saw a lot of people did, um, maybe after like a couple of tries, then yay, you got it right. So this was kind of a weird question because when you expand this, you actually get negative X to the power of 2001, which actually just crosses out this. So we are, we do not worry. This is not a 2001st degree equation. This is a 2000th degree equation. Um, still big, but um, don't worry. So remember to sum of the roots, we're gonna find the coefficient of the X to the 2000 and the X to the 1999. And then we're gonna put, take this over this and take the negative. Um, and we don't have to worry about the no multiple roots because um, yeah, I, I think they wanted to make sure that there was no ambiguity with like, oh, do we add like multiple of multiple roots? They're like, oh, there are no multiple roots. So it's all good. Uh, anyway, I'll stop rambling and let's go ahead and get to the question. Um, 2000, so first of all, it's gonna be one half to the first and X to the 2000, and it's gonna be multiplied by 2001, uh, choose one. So when we find that, that's gonna be 2001 over two. And then this thing, it's gonna be 2001, choose two times one half squared. We're gonna take this 2001 times 2000 over eight, actually, because there's two here, there are two here and there's one here, over 2001 divided by two. Cross that out, cross that out, that's gonna be 2000 over four. Also, this is gonna be negative. Yeah, this is gonna be negative because it's negative X to the 1999, but um, because this VN is we actually take the negative of the negative, so it's still positive. Um, and that's gonna be 500. And that's our answer. Okay. All right, give this one a try. This one's not too bad, but. I think this was a bit easier than the previous question, so just give this a try. I'll give you like two minutes. I have seen three different answers from three different people. Um, concern. Everyone check your work. Oh, well, it's been two minutes anyway. Um, <laughs> oh, that's a fourth different answer. <laughs> um, well then. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's give this one a try. So um, 
first of all, let's just write out all our Vieta equations. So let's say that the zeros are going to be R1, R2, R3. R1 plus R2 plus R3 is going to be negative A. Remember your signs, by the way. R1, R2, R1, R3, R1, R, R2, R3, my bad. It's going to be B. And R1, R2, R3 is negative C. So all good there. Um, fortunately, we don't need too many of those. We I, actually, no, we, we don't need this one. Um, but everything else is fine. So first of all, the y-intercept of this graph is two, which means that c is two. So we can just, just scratch that out, it's gonna be two. And this is gonna be negative two. Cool. Um, that means that the product of its zeros is also two. Um, or the product of its zeros is negative two. Um, yeah, sorry, my brain kind of puzzled. And then, yeah, so just keep in mind, this value is going to be negative two. I've, I've said that like three times, but keep in mind what you're looking for. Now we have R1, R2, R3, the average of the zeros, R1 plus R2 plus R3, all over three is going to be negative two. So this is actually going to be negative six. And negative six is negative A, so A is equal to six. This is actually some good practice for our next question um, in that you want to write out all of your coefficients and known stuff somewhere so that you don't forget about them. Also remember, since everything adds up to negative two, so we have uh, a one here, uh, a two, he a six here, and a two here, which means we still have a B. So one plus two plus six plus B is negative two. And then when you calculate that out, you should get that B is negative 11. So for everyone who said negative 11, nice job, yay. Yeah, I, I saw a couple of negative 11s coming at the end and I was like, oh, yeah, nice job. Um, yeah. Sorry, my eyes are a bit itchy. That one was less computation heavy and more just tricky. And keep an eye out for those signs. Um, all right, our next question. Okay, this question is kind of a beast. Um, so I will give you some time for it. My biggest suggestion is take your time and put, store all of your information somewhere safe. Um, <laughs> Andrew, I think you might have seen this question before, but yeah, this is a, a question from the AMC 10 and 12 from a while back. And it was like, like number 23 or number 24. Um, so it's pretty late AMC, um, but I actually think this is one of the easier late AMC questions, um, but it's still very informative. So please just try it if you have not seen it before, or even if you have seen it before, do it all over again so that you can like, Matt, like, get your math chops up.
Thanks. Okay, I saw one other correct answer, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, first of all, there is so much information in this question. Um, it, it's, 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 it's kind of overwhelming. Um, and that's like a pretty good rule. Um, that's like something that we want to uh, like work with. So first of all, let's assign names to our groups. We're gonna work a lot with Vietas. So it's gonna be R1, R2, R3, and this is gonna, and then the extra root get, that gets tacked on here is gonna be R4. So let's just take a deep breath and write out every single Vietas thing we know. So R1 plus R2 plus R3 is negative A. R1, R2 plus R1, R3 plus R2, R3 is equal to one. R1, R2, R3 is negative 10. Okay, that's our first equation. Then from here, we have R1 plus R2 plus R3 plus R4 is negative one. R1, R2 plus R1, R3 plus R1, R4 plus R2, R3 plus R2, R4 plus R3, R4 is B. R1, R2, R3 plus R1, R2, R4 plus R1, R3, R4 plus R2, R3, R4 is negative 100. Phew. And R1, R2, R3, R4 is negative C. Negative positive, negative positive. Uh, crap. Um, it's just going to be normal C. Uh, my, that, sorry, that was my bad. Um, Okay, so now let's get let's get started with just dissecting this. Luckily, a lot of this we don't have to worry about too much because we, we don't know A, B, or C. So let's just kind of steer away from those for now. Um, though we do want to find B and C. All right, uh, where do we start? There are some good places to begin. Um, so for anyone who found the answer, feel free to just like put something in the chat on like where you began. Um, if you see some common terms on both of these, then those are fantastic. And there are a lot of them. Okay, I'll just tell you. Um, when we put in this in here, this is gonna be negative 10. And then what happens to, so that means that this is all gonna be negative 90, right? But it also has a common term of R4. So let's just factor that out, R, R4. R1, R2 plus R1, R3 plus R2, R3 is going to be negative 90. And we know what this is, right? So what does R4, oh, what's R4? And we're gonna write this up in the corner. R4 is negative 90. Okay, awesome. Um, yeah, it's a really good place to begin. Um, can we find C now? That's already, that's another good step to completing this question. C is going to be 900. Because if we take negative 90 and multiply by negative 10, we're going to have C is 900. Nice. Now we just need to find B, and then we'll be done with this question because we need F of 1. And uh, we're, we, we, we're like half of the way there because we have these three terms, R1, R2, R1, R3, R2, R3, added together, this can be 1. Um, but we still need to know um, what's R1, R4, plus R2, R4, plus R3, R4. Luckily, this is just... Sorry, I muted myself. Um, 
R1 plus R2 plus R3 times R4. We know R4, and we can pretty easily find what negative A is. Um, what would that be? Or, yeah, uh, what, what's R1? Or, actually, no, we can just find it from here. Well, it's not negative 89, though I, I do, I recognize you guys are looking for A. We actually don't need to find A. We only need to find what um, the sum is. And um, I do believe that's just 89, right? But yeah, I guess if we want to write like uh, A is negative 89, that's good. All right, so now let's find B. Um, someone tell me what B is. Just do, I, I know kind of a lot of calculation, but uh, For everyone who said B is negative 8,009, you're correct. So now let's just plug in one and then just get this question over with. One plus one uh, minus 8,009 uh, plus 100 uh, plus uh, 900. And once you calculate that, this tends to turn into 1,000. So it's negative 7,009 plus two, negative 7,007. Good. Oh, um, <laughs> drop my pen. But yeah, uh, hopefully that makes sense to everyone. Keep in mind, that was a lot of information that we had to chug through. So make sure to store it somewhere safe, like this box up here. Um, uh, otherwise, if you have like a ton of scratch paper and you know your information gets lost, uh, yikes. So. Okay. Do you want to get to the rest of the questions? I think we're going a little bit slow, but um, I think there aren't too many left. So this is actually an old useful question, which is kind of interesting because it's not a proof question, but um, don't get intimidated. It's more or less like standard. Um, like it's like just a normal computational question, but for some reason it's an old useful. Uh, five points if you can guess what year it's from. No, I'm kidding. Uh, do the, like. Uh, give this one a try. It's not too bad. <laughs> yep, it was from 
Okay, I'll kind of work this through, um, partially for, for time, partially because, um, yeah, I don't know, waiting this morning. <laughs> uh, let's just write out all of our Vieta's equations. So we have, you know, standard four roots, R1, all of them added. It's going to be 18. R1, R2 plus R1, R3 plus R1, R4 plus R2, R3 plus R2, R4 plus R3, R4 uh, is equal to K. R1, R2, R3 plus R1, R2, R4 plus R1, R3, R4 plus R2, R3, R4 is negative 200. And all of them multiplied together is 1984, negative, positive, negative, positive. So it's negative, actually. Oh, this negative stuff is kind of annoying. Um, so, and then let's see our last bit of known, known information. Let's say that uh, R1, R2 is going to be negative 32. Um, yeah. Then R3, what's R3, R4? Sixty-two, perfecto. Um, yeah, and then we have. If you look, you, you know, there's a lot of terms with R R one two R one R two R three R four. We'll ignore the K one for now because you know that doesn't really get us anywhere. But um, it might be worth. Actually, no. Let's have a look at it now. Just just because. Uh, let's put a negative thirty two here. Sorry, I'm a bit indecisive. I know. Let's put a sixty two here. So thirty one plus R1, R3, plus R1, R4, plus R2, R3, plus R2, R4. So this looks kind of arbitrary. Um, like there's nothing nice that gets us these terms, or is there? Hmm. What's nice is that, uh, like if you notice R1, R3, R1, R4, R2, R3, R2, R4, then you can actually factor it. Um, so you get R1 plus R2 times R3 plus R4, which means we have a new, um, we have a new um, objective. Uh, we want to find what each of these are and, you know, add it to 30 so that we can find what K is. Okay. And fortunately, like, it's not too bad to find these um, because we, we have this prepared and we have this down here. So let's go ahead and you know, see if we can use these products to find something cool in here. Um, by the way, we can basically just erase this lower equation because it is no longer helpful. We have glean, we have like oh, squeezed every last bit of usefulness from it. <laughs> um, so let's go ahead and put that back in. Negative 32 times R3 plus R4 um, plus 62 times R1 plus R2 is equal to negative 200. At this point, I think we should probably substitute because um, we have to work with like uh, partially because of my hand, I, I don't like writing too much and partially because I don't want to get like too bogged down with like all these R's. So let's just call this A and let's call this B. And it's and then it also makes the fact that what we're looking for is just a linear combination, like a lot more, a lot easier to see. So this ends up turning into A plus B is equal to 18. And this thing turns into 62A minus 32B is equal to negative 200. Um, and then, can, and then let's go ahead and just like kind of first factor the, or like divide both sides by two to make it a little cleaner. And can someone tell me what your uh, linear combination ends up being or like your ordered pair?
Yeah, Andrew, that's right. Anyone else wanna tell me what you get? Yeah, so you should get four and 14. And, you know, we, like once you make sure that it works in both of these, we're done. Uh, because remember, all we're looking for is 30 plus the product of AB, 30 plus AB is equal to K. And this ends up being 56. So our final answer is 86. Woo! Congratulations. That was a very old useful question. Um, if you have any questions, let me know now. Just like how we did anything. Um, Okay. Um, I'm going to skip this for now because they're kind of useless, but if you'd like to investigate something later on, it's going to be, it's called Newton sums. And um, I know I mentioned that, oh, I want to talk about a focus and direct trick question, uh, direct tricks question, but I don't like this one very much. It's kind of, it's like more combo than it is algebra. Uh, so let's, uh, let's go on to my favorite question of the day. Um, this this kind of blurry question actually, but um, this is this is one of my favorite questions, and it's um, as a nice little hint, it's not Vieta's. Um, I I said this; it, it was mentioned in the um, the slide a, a couple of slides before this, but these are non vietas polynomials. So just to kind of uh, test your knowledge of polynomials as a whole. Um, so now we're going to be dealing with some very large degree polynomials. Um, as a hint, I'll give you two minutes. As a hint, uh, this looks very nice. Uh, see if you can do anything with it. Not nice. It, it looks very familiar is a, is a good word for it. Well, well, don't do it now, but like, you know, when you're playing around with the question. Hi, Russell. Oh, we're we're just wrapping up. Okay, so um, let's talk about this question. Um, first of all, this one's uh, I, like I, um, I this is uh, this is a question from this year's Pumac, um, aka a Princeton math contest. So it's around any level. Um, that being said, uh, I did take this question contest this year. So <laughs> this is actually a question I had to solve in contest. And once I solved that, I was like, oh my gosh, this is like one of my favorite questions I've ever seen. Uh, I definitely want to like teach it, teach other people how to do it. Um, so with that being said, let's go ahead and try this. Um, this is one that you don't want to use Vietas on, uh, even though they literally hand you the roots. Um, it's still kind of a mess. So let's try that factor form, because keep in mind, these are monic. What monic means is that for first coefficient is just equal to one. So we can let P of X be X minus R1, X minus R2, X minus R10. And Q of X, uh, this is gonna be a pain to write. Uh, I will use pi notation. Go from 45 to one. And then we have X minus RI plus RJ 
minus R1, Rj. So let's take the information that we're given. So first of all, P0, well, P is zero, let's put in zero in this question, in this equation. And when we do that, we get R1, R2, all the way to R10. Notice that there's no negatives. That's gonna be equal to two. Cool, uh, that's, our good, that's a good first step. Now let's uh, figure out what this Q of one is all about. Because usually when something tells you to put in like one of something, uh, it's kind of kind of a weird request. Like, what, what do you exactly do with this? Actually, um, I have to show you, because what happens when you put one in here is that you get one minus R sub I minus R sub J plus R sub I R sub J. And if you've seen Simon's favorite factoring trick, then you can actually factor this into, don't wanna tell me in chat. This looks like it. Yeah, Andrew, perfect. You would factor this into um, I guess this works. Yeah, so keep in mind we do this for every i and every j, for i is less than j. So that would mean that q of x or q of 1 is equal to uh, 1 over r1 minus 1 to the power of and you would do the same with all of these. Like how many times does this appear? Or the, does that term appear? To the ninth power, because um, you know we have forty-five terms, because uh, forty-five or forty-five of these, and we have ten of these total. Uh, but everything appear like um, every one of these forty-five terms has two, breaks into two components. You know, one R I, one R J. So everything's going to be ninety, and then you know, everything's to the power of nine. So this is all equal to two, which means that one minus R sub one minus one. Um, one minus R2, R sub one, blah, 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 is all equal to two to the power of one over nine. Uh, okay, so that's kind of a cute observation. Well, why is it important? Well, let's uh, rewrite this as R1 minus one over R1, R2 minus one over R2. Um, I, I realize I mixed it up. It's actually one minus R1, but it doesn't matter because there's it's a negative positive, it's, it's fine. Um, this is all equal to two to the one ninth. Um, and then the, when you multiply it all, all out, notice that the denominator is just R1, R2, R2 R10. So it's going to be 2. So what happens is we get R1 minus 1, R2 minus 1, da, 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 da. R10 minus 1 is all equal to 2 to the power of 10 over 9. OK, well, why is this important? Well, if you look at this P of 1, that's just 1 minus R times 1 minus R2 times blah, 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 times all the way to 1 minus R10, which is just literally this. Like we don't even have to worry about signs because there are 10 terms. So therefore log two of this is gonna be 10 over nine, which means our answer is 19. Um, that was kind of rushed because I know we're out of time, but um, I hope you could at least see kind of the algebra behind it. Um, and feel free to watch the class recording afterwards. Um, and yeah, uh, that's gonna be all for today. Um, and these slides will be up on the Kid Teach Kid website um, like today. So I will hand this over to Russell and I will, um, yeah, um, bye. Good luck with math contests and, uh, and, and any future endeavors. So Russell, I'll make you the host.